Sorry about that, my mic was muted this whole time. Anyway, as I was saying, great return by Sergio Bailey to set up Brogan Roback and the Eagles. We are on the road against the 5-2 Northern Illinois Huskies. Eagles 6-0. This is a very important conference game. Both teams in the same division. NIU, one loss in the conference. EMU, undefeated. So this game could go a long way to determining who wins the conference or the division here in the MAC. As on the first play of the game, Shaq Van gets it on a draw, fights off two tacklers, and picks up four yards. Single back formation, Roback takes a snap, he drops back, he throws it over the middle to Antoine Porter who can't hang on to it, that was a first down pass, but Porter drops the ball, brings up third and six now for the Eagles. Two wide receivers out right, one to the left, two backs in the shotgun on both sides of Roback, Erickson to his right, Van to his left, the snap to Roback, it's going to be a screen to Van and it's read nicely by the NIU defense, he's taken down as soon as he hauls it in. And the Eagles are forced to punt it away on their opening possession. Barnes will have it drop inside the 10 and roll into the end zone for a touchback. So the Husky offense takes over at their own 20, led by redshirt senior quarterback Drew Hare. Up and down this year, he has eight touchdowns to six interceptions. He's going to hand it off to Bognon, who goes to the right side, and he is dropped by Spearman just shy of the 30. It's going to be second and one. Another hurry up offense that the Eagles defense has to face as they're back to the line in the pistol. It's going to be a handoff to Bognon again who breaks the tackle, breaks another one and he ends up with a 10 yard carry. So far so good for the Huskies after two plays. Back to the line, back in the pistol. One back to his left, one behind him. It's going to be another handoff to Drew Bognon and he is wrapped up in the backfield this time. That's Ike Calderon getting them second and 12 now as the Eagles defense wins their first play of the game. It's an empty set. Five wide receivers, no tight ends in the formation. Hare has the ball. He has time in the pocket going deep down the left sideline. It's caught by Kenny Galladay. He breaks the tackle at the 21. Inside the 10. Pushed out of bounds just before crossing the plane. Great play there by Kenny Galladay who's technically in the NFL right now. So I'm not sure why he's on this roster, but he looks like an NFL player on that one. First and goal, Huskies at the half yard line as they hurry back to the line of scrimmage. Same formation, Hare takes the snap. He's gonna scramble himself and he's gonna be dropped. Shy of the goal line, coming up to make the stop was Ike Spearman. Now it's second and goal for the Huskies from the two. Backup defense line in for the Eagles after that big play in the hurry up offense. They get a break, Hare throwing to the end zone and he has Turner for the touchdown for the Huskies. And a quick 6-0 lead for the Huskies in this one. Maryland at home tops number nine, Michigan 35 to 24. Somehow Michigan was number nine at five and two. Disregard that, the fact is they lose to Maryland on the road. Big upset there. A three and out by the Eagles followed by a easy looking touchdown drive by the Huskies is the story of this one after two possessions. Now in the I formation to start this drive, it's Shaq Van up the middle, picks up four. Eagles no strangers to being behind in a few games this year. Robinson goes in motion right to left. It's gonna be a fake to Van. Roback drops back and fires one over the middle to Sergio Bailey who hauls in the high pass and picks up the first down. Single back formation, three wide receivers out right, one to the left. Porter comes in motion right to left. Roback drops back, he has time, he's gonna toss it out right to Sergio Bailey and he missed him. Sergio Bailey was wide open and he had one man to beat to the end zone, but Brogan Roback with the rare misstep just overthrew it. That brings up second and 10 from the 35. Roback drops back, he's gonna throw one out right, he tries to loop it in and it's gonna be knocked away. That one hung just a bit too long, trying to get it into Dan Bushman, it looked like, or perhaps Johnny Neapalu. It brings up third and 10 now. Pistol formation, two tight end set. It's gonna be a delayed handoff to Shaq Van, who goes to the left, breaks a tackle, gets across midfield, and he's down the sideline after picking up the first down inside the 20. Down at the 14 yard line, a 51 yard carry by Shaq Van on third and 10. What a play by Shaq Van. Had one man to beat and he did it. Picked up the first and a whole lot more. Now the Eagles are at the 14 with a first and 10. 
Robax is going to take the snap. He's going to give it to Ian Erickson, who cuts back in the middle, breaks the tackle himself, and ends up with seven yards and a nice pickup. The Eagles looked like they were in trouble on that third and ten. Now they're at second and three inside the ten of the Huskies. Rollback on the option, makes a move, and gets taken down just shy of the goal line. It's going to be first and goal Eagles. Heavy set in for the Eagles. Shaq Van behind the fullback. They're going to fake a give to him. It's going to be a play action. Rollback fires to the corner of the end zone, and it's hauled in by Johnny Neopalu. Touchdown, Eagles. And the Eagles with a great drive to respond to the Huskies' touchdown drive. Eight plays, 72 yards, 221. Time of possession. Tiptoe catch by Johnny Neopalu. And this game is knotted up as another upset. Another top 10 team goes down to an unranked team this time. It was Louisville losing to Syracuse 34 to 23. A lot of upsets going on today in the world of college football. So let's see how the Huskies offense responds on their second possession of the day. They had a great first possession that ended in a touchdown. Now the first play is an option to Drew Heron. He's got room, but no blocker in front. He had to take on the man by himself. He broke the tackle and picks up the first down. Could have been more had he had a blocker out in front. Back to the line, yet again come the Huskies in a hurry. Yet again in the pistol. Turner comes in motion. It's gonna be a triple option, and Kwani Figueroa is there to blow it up. Drew Hare read the first option, and before he could even start to read the second, he was in the arms of Kwani Figueroa for a loss of three. So after the incomplete pass, it's gonna bring up a third and long, drop ball over the middle. This is a empty set. Four wide receivers out right, one to his left. Hare in the pocket, had time, but nobody was open. He started to feel the pressure, tried to get it to his receiver out left, but it was underthrown as he was retreating as he threw it. So a good defensive stand on that possession by the Eagles. Gave up one first down and then clamped down. They should get pretty good field position from this Sergio Bailey return, which he will field at about the 31, and he will take it to the left side. Try to bring it back up the middle. He's wrapped up nicely. 10-yard return on the play. Shotgun formation. Shaq Van to Robax left. They take the snap. It's going to be a give to Van. He goes right up the middle, untouched for 11 yards. Nice day so far for Shaq Van, and we're not even out of the first quarter. He has 71 yards rushing on only four carries, obviously aided by that 51-yarder. But nonetheless, 20 yards on his other three. First and 10, Bailey in motion. Roback drops back, he's gonna fire it over the middle to Bailey, who is near the line to gain, and it looks like he got it, 11 yards on the play. Just like that, Eagles are in Husky territory at the 35. First and 10, single back, two tight end. Bailey in motion at the right side. Roback takes the snap, he's gonna be flushed out of the pocket, he's gonna try and throw it away on the run. He ends up getting hit as he's thrown, and it falls incomplete. Second and 10, single back. Three wide receivers left, one right. Roback, delayed hand off the van, up the middle, more room to run. He's got 14 yards on the play. Shaq Van is running untouched all game. Keep giving it to him. Eagles now at the 20 yard line, fresh set of downs, pistol formation. Roback, the give to Van, right side, he gets blocks and he's got five yards, breaks the tackle, ends up with eight yards before being pushed out of bounds. Second and two from the 12 and a half. Rollback takes the snap. He's going to throw it left to Johnny Neopalu, who gets wrapped up from behind. That could have been six. Nonetheless, it's a first down on the seven-yard catch by Neopalu. That sets up a first and goal, Eagles from the five. Rollback in the shotgun. Erickson to his right. Van to his left. Here's the snap. It's going to be a triple option. Fumbled the football. Picked up by Mays, and he's going to go the distance. Unbelievable change of possession. The Huskies will take the lead just when it looked like the Eagles would do it. Brandon Mays on the scoop and score goes about 95 yards to give the Huskies a 13-7 lead, PAT pending. That was a triple option. Rollback with the wrong read, didn't give it to Van, and once he realized that was a mistake, he tried to get it to Ian Erickson, but he was hit as he pitched, and Brandon Mays was right there to scoop and score a critical turn of events for this game. Erickson feels the kick now on the return. He's only going to get it out to the 20, 
And that is the end of the first quarter. The Huskies with a 14-7 lead here at home over the Eastern Michigan Eagles. Only down a score very early in this game, but a swing of momentum like that really takes the wind out of your sails. Let's see how the Eagles offense responds after giving up seven of their own. It's going to be a first down run to Van, who makes a move in the backfield and gets 10 yards. This guy's getting 10 yards every time he touches the football. He's over 100 yards rushing already on only seven carries. Second and in inches. It's a shotgun formation. Erickson to the right. He's going to fake it to Erickson. It's going to be an option, but both options were covered. Roback loses four. It's coming off of the right side was a Ludu, but a nickel who brings him down for a loss. It's going to bring up a critical third and four for the Eagles at the 26. The momentum already strongly in the Huskies' favor after that massive swing, a 14-point swing potentially, makes this third down feel very important. Bailey in motion. Roback takes the snap. He's going to fire it over the middle, and he's got Kilby, who breaks the tackle, breaks another tackle, and is finally dragged down right about the 30-yard line. Nigel Kilby on, with a nice reception. Big first down conversion by the Eagles. Single back is Erickson. Two tight ends set. They're going to give it to Erickson. Left side, he's wrapped up in the backfield. Second and 11, Roback. Fires it on the left side, right through a tight window. But what a play by Brandon Mays yet again. Diving in to break up that pass intended for Antoine Porter on the left side. Now it brings up another big third down. This is a third and 11. Roback takes the snap. He's gonna scramble right, stops, throws over to the right side. He had two receivers open and it falls right in between them. Not sure who the intended target was. So this is the Huskies offense taking the field for the first time since Scoring that go-ahead touchdown on defense. See if they can add to it. First down play is going to be an option. Hair goes to the left and he gets met before he could do too much damage. Hair takes the snap on this one. It's a blitz from the Eagles. He has to quickly dump it out to his running back. He only picks up one on the play. The Eagles defense trying to get the offense the ball back with a quick three and out on this possession. Third and four from the 35. Shotgun formation for the Huskies. Single back to his right, tight end. Three wide receivers out left. Here with the snap in the pocket. Lots of time, gets it out left. Beautiful throw and a beautiful catch by Turner right at the sideline. Huge pickup inside EMU territory at about the 40 yard line. Brings up a fresh set of downs. Back to the line they come. Pistol formation. Hair, option, keeps it. He comes out left, he's got one man in front of him and he gets wrapped up by him, picks up six on first down. Almost a wishbone formation for the Huskies. It's a quick throw out right to Kenny Galladay who picks up three, but it's not enough to move the chains. Brings up a third and one from about the 31. This might be four down territory for the Huskies. Be interesting to see their play call here. Eagles on a safety blitz and Bowen, and Bowenon breaks the tackle in the backfield and ends up with six yards and a first down. Trying to put the screws to the Eagles with the touchdown here. Huff takes it on a delayed handoff. He looks like Shaq Van as he goes right up the middle and isn't touched until he's picked up the first down. He ends up with 16 on his first carry of the day. Back to the line in a hurry are the Huskies. It's first and goal now from the eight. Air option, keeps it himself, right up the gut, gets a great block right in front of him and that springs him free for the touchdown for the Huskies. They take a two score lead here, nearing the end of the first half. An eight play, 66 yard drive and only a little under two minutes by the Huskies. Puts them up two touchdowns now. Eagles are feeling it, let's see if they can't add some points before the end of the half. Bailey with a nice return, gets it out near the 30 yard line. Rogan Roback has not had a good game so far. And they may depend on him. Down multiple scores, they're gonna have to throw the ball some more. Even though Shaq Van's, Shaq Van's been very good to start this one. Roback, gonna be a fake give to Van. He scrambles right, only two wide receivers running routes. He's actually gonna keep it himself. And he goes out of bounds after picking up eight. Second and two from about the 36. It's going to be a give to Van on, it looked like an option, and again another huge hole, another huge pickup by Shaq Van, that's 11 yards and a first down. Shaq Van is just shredding the Huskies defense, that's 114 yards rushing on only 8 carries, 
first and ten. Roback takes the snap. He's going to fire one out to the right, and it's dropped by Johnny Neapolu. He had him for about a gain of six or seven. There's too many mistakes on offense so far for the Eagles. Some missed throws by Roback, some drop balls, and then that fumble. Second down play, it's actually going to be a handoff, and Van has to just try and get to the edge. He's not able to do so. Only a two-yard pickup on that one brings up third and eight from the 50. Situations like this is where Brogan Roback, very good quarterback, senior quarterback, has got to step up. Third and eight, single back formation, one tight end, two wide receivers out right, one to the left. Roback takes the snap. He's flushed out of the pocket to the right. He's not going to have time. He is sacked on the play. That's going to bring up a fourth and 17. Brogan Roback on that sack. It's the first going to be a shovel pass on a disastrous looking play. It's going to go for a loss on the play, but there's a face mask on the tackle by Luke McLean. So instead of what would have been second and about 16 from inside their own 20, it's going to be first down at the 27. So just nothing going the Eagles' way so far today. Brogan Roback, as I was saying, actually left the field on that sack, and he looks a little shaken up. We'll see if he comes back. He's had to leave a number of games so far this year. First down pass to the right side. It's in by Turner for a gain of six, and the Huskies call their first time out with 138 to go. You can't like the Eagles' chances if Brogan Roback can't come back in this game down two scores, maybe more, by the time they get the ball next. As the Huskies have a chance to add on here, and they'll get the ball to start the second half. This is a screen pass that doesn't have enough time to be set up. Drew Harris sacked on the play. That's Jeremiah Harris. Shotgun formation. Harris going to give it to Bowenon on a draw. He picks up five on the play, and the Eagles use their second timeout with a minute 29 to go. Bailey back deep to return the punt. He's going to field it at about the... 33 he gets a block right out in front and now he goes down the left side near the sideline gets brought down at the Eagles 49 yard line minute 20 to go one time out Roback is on the field he takes the snap throws one over the middle Sergio Bailey that's caught pick up a six but it's in the middle of the field not enough for the first down the clock's still running under a minute 10 to go they hurry back to the line second and four just inside Husky territory Roback takes the snap. This time he fires one to the left, and that one's nearly intercepted. Dangerous throw there. Another third down coming up for the Eagles offense. Eagles only two for five on third down. There's going to be a play action. Roback with the fake. He scrambles right. Nobody open downfield. He just lays one out there, and that one is also almost intercepted. The wide receivers aren't doing Roback any favors. Not a lot of separation downfield, and despite leading the Huskies by six extra yards in total yardage, the Eagles down 14. Looks like might be the deficit going into halftime. Huskies get the ball back, 48 seconds left. We'll see if they try to add on here. And bad news for the Eagles defense. Ike Spearman, a linebacker, leaves the game. He's not going to return with an ACL sprain. So hopefully it's not too severe in the long run, but they're going to be without him for the remainder of this one. So it looks like the Huskies are content to take this 14-point lead into the locker room. And why wouldn't you be? This is a very important game in the Mac West. The loser of this game will need some help. This is a screen pass on the last play of the half. It's a pickup of 11, and that will do it going into halftime. Northern Illinois lead the Eagles 21 to seven. The Eagles have come back a couple of times this year. They'll need a big one here today. Can they do it? We'll find out coming up. Huskies offense takes over to start the second half from their own 25. First down, pistol formation. Hare with the give to Bowen on up the middle. He only picks up a yard on that one. This Eagles defense needs to get off the field and give their offense a chance to pull it to within a score. Here to start the second half. Second and nine for the Huskies. It's another give to Bowen on up the middle again. This time he has the first down, 10 yard pickup. Hurry up offense for the Huskies. Trying to wear down the Eagles defense here in the second half. Roman goes in motion to the left. It's another give to Bowen on. This time he gets three. Second and seven for the Huskies. Bowen on gets it again. This time he's got the left side. He's going down the sideline with room. He gets dragged down by one of the only men who had a chance at him. But not before he picks up nice yardage into Eagle territory. Down at about the 40 yard line 
And it's going to be a delay of game on the Huskies. They did not have enough time despite the hurry up, no huddle. A lot of confusion trying to get that play in, and that's actually going to back them up five yards. Still in Eagle territory, now at the 48 for a first and 15. Empty set. Four wide receivers out to the right, one to the left. Hare, four-man rush for the Eagles. He throws it out right, and it's hauled in by Huff. Only a pickup of five brings up a second and ten. In the shotgun with a running back to the right, it's Huff, and he gets the carry, but he's going to be hauled down in the backfield. They're going to lose two. Clay Halford, the backup defensive lineman, in giving the starters a rest after playing this hurry-up offense this series. He comes up with a big stop. Brings up third and 12 as the first team defensive line comes back in the game to try and get this big stop for the Eagles defense. Hare takes the snap. Here comes the blitz for the Eagles and they get him in the backfield. Derek Williams comes in and he makes the sack from his linebacker position. Nice pick up on the blitz by the running back but the Eagles still sent too many men that could be blocked. And Hare just didn't see Williams coming. That brings up a fourth and 20. Big stop for the Eagles defense. Now the Eagles offense has a chance to try and get back in this back in this one with their first possession of the second half. Let's see if Sergio Bailey can set him up with some good field position. He's gonna field this one inside the 15. He's gonna bring it out to the left. He's across the 30, dragged down at about the 33. Eye formation for the Eagles to start this one. They're going to give it to Van. He goes to the outside, cuts it back, makes a move, picks up nine. Single back formation, it is Van. And he's going to get the handoff. He cuts it left. Beautiful move across midfield. Pick up a 14. Down at about the 46-yard line of the Huskies. There's some games where one man just takes over, and this might be that game for Van. I'd keep giving it to him until the Huskies show they can stop it. First down play, it's going to be Van on the option. He goes to the left side this time, breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, picks up six. Van is not going to be stopped today. They come back out in the I formation on second and four from the 40-yard line. It's going to be a give to Van. Up the middle, he's dragged down by the face mask. He wants a penalty. Should be a penalty, but there is no penalty called on the play. Brings up third and one for the Eagles. I formation again. It's going to be a drop back. No, it's a delayed handoff to Van who hit, stumbles trying to get around his own lineman. Still ends up with five yards and a first down. Van is averaging over 10 yards per carry. Does have that 50 yard run that kind of boosts that, but it doesn't seem like it. A five yard pickup seems like a disappointment with the way he's been running all day. First down play for Roback and nothing doing. He's going to get out of the pocket though and he picks up five. Rogan Roback looked like that was going to be a sack on the play. Somehow he escapes the grasp of two Husky defenders and just takes off. Can't blame him for that. He actually ends up with five yards. Great play by Brogan Roback there. Brings up second and five just outside the 25. Single back formation. Roback will drop back and throw. And over the middle hauled in by Sergio Bailey down at about the 14-yard line. First down Eagles. First and 10. Single back. Robinson goes in motion right to left. Now they're going to give it to Van up the middle. Maneuvers his way through the hole, picks up six yards. Second and four from the eight. To give to Van up the middle. This time not much doing, but he does pick up three. It's going to bring up third and one. And it is a long yard. Heavy set formation for both teams on the field. Roback going to give it to the fullback, Robinson, who... Pounds his way right up the middle and gets that yard. Nice effort by Levante Robinson to pick up the first. It brings up first and goal for the Eagles at the three. First and goal. It's Van up the middle. Touchdown, Eagles. And a great response by the Eagles to start this half. A huge time-killing drive by the offense after their defense gets off the field to start the half. And the Eagles are back within a touchdown 11 play. 62-yard drive, eating up almost five minutes a clock. What a drive, led by Shaq Van. It's been a trend all year that the Eagles' defense has played their best in the second half. If they want to come back in this one, they'll need that trend to continue. After their first defensive possession, so far so good. But here in the first play of the second possession, Hare goes right side on an option and picks up 13. Nice play call there. That option has been deadly for the Huskies many times today. 
Brings up first down across the 25 yard line now for the Huskies. Air drops back, it's gonna be a quick pass. He gets it out to women out to the left and he gets dragged down, but not after he picks up eight yards. Not until after he picks up eight yards, I should say. Back to the line now come the Huskies, second and two. Hare, another quick pass. This is going to be a screen out to Kenny Galladay. Gets a block. He's across midfield just past the 40-yard line of the Eagles. He's dragged down at the 38-yard line. And quick plays by the Huskies, and they're back in Eagle territory now. Hare takes the snap. Another pass. This one's going to be a screen to Boanon, and Boanon has a blocker. He's down inside the 30, down to the 20-yard line. And just like that, in the red zone are the Huskies with a seven point lead, trying to make it a two score lead as we approach the end of the third quarter. First down Huskies, option play, Hare keeps it, only gets about a yard on that one. Second and nine, turnover would be nice, wouldn't it? Hare, option play, gives it the Bowen on this time, he picks up four up the middle. And that will do it for the end of three. The Eagles haven't faced defeat yet this season, but they're staring it in the face. We got one quarter to go. Northern Illinois is critical divisional game in the MAC, 21 to 14. Big third down here. It's third and six from the 16 yard line. In the pistol yet again. Three wide receivers out to the right. One of them's a tight end. Hare takes a snap. It's gonna be a screen to the left. Huff has it. He's at the 15, 10, five. Gets dragged down right there. Not a lot of speed on Huff, but he had open field. It didn't matter. He picks up the first. It's first and goal. Huskies from the five looking for what could be a killer touchdown here. Hare will give it to Jordan Huff again. This time he's got blockers all the way to the edge and he walks into the end zone. Touchdown Huskies. A huge response by the Huskies. They score in a hurry, which is how they score. So the plus side is not a lot of clock is gone. The downside is you're down two scores to a dangerous offense. Shaq Van has been the man all day, but now you're getting in a situation where running may not be beneficial. On first down though, they will do an option. And once again, both options are covered up. The option has not been working too well for the Eagles today. Brings up second and 13 at the 22. Roback drops back on the second down play. He's gonna just fire it short over the middle. Dan Bushman picks up six, brings up a third and seven. Single back formation, Roback fakes to give the van, he's flushed out of the pocket to the left, he's gonna keep it himself and he's gonna get the first down and more, he's near midfield before running out of bounds at about the 48 yard line. Big 20 yard pickup by Brogan Roback. First and 10 now, near midfield, shotgun, van to his left. Roback takes the snap, it's gonna be a draw play to van, he's got the left side, picks up seven on the play. Not a lot of speed or burst on that one. Van's been out here on this drive for every play, getting a little tired. He's still on the field for the second and three from the 45. Roback takes the snap. He's going to be passing it. He rolls out of the pocket again, and he's going to keep it again. Nobody open downfield. He gets just enough for the first down. And he's got to be exhausted now. He's been running everywhere on this drive. First and 10 from the 40. Single back formation. Two tight ends on the left side. Two wide receivers on opposite sides. They're going to give it to Van. He's going to go left side. He gets four yards on the play. The Eagles have got to start throwing the ball. They got the quarterback to do it, but not getting a lot of separation so far today. Roback has this one in the pocket, and he fires it out to Aristotle, who picks up the first down. Big catch there. We don't see much of him, but he comes up with a big reception on this play. And inside the 20 now are the Eagles. First and 10, Roback drops back, he's throwing again. This time he's gonna go right side, corner of the end zone. Man on Nigel Kilby and he's unable to haul it in. Second and 10, Eagles, four down territory, no doubt. Roback, big drop back, he throws on the run. He's got Kilby inside the 10, hauled down, just shy of the first down marker. It's gonna bring up third and one. Third and one from the seven. It's gonna be Van up the middle, breaks a tackle, gets it down to the two yard line. First and goal Eagles, little over four minutes to go here. First and goal, pistol formation. Hand off Ian Erickson up the middle, untouched, touchdown. Eagles back to within seven with about four minutes to go here. 11 plays, 71 yard drive, a little over 340 on the time of possession. Another top 10 team in jeopardy. Oregon State knotted up with Stanford in the fourth quarter. 
Eastern Michigan does kick it deep with four minutes left. Charlie Batch trusting his defense to get off the field and getting the offense a chance to tie this ball game up. First down play. It's going to be a passing play by Hare. Nowhere to go with it, and he just throws it away. Doesn't want to make a mistake in the, at this portion of the game. So it's second and ten now. Almost no time off the clock on that play. Three seconds elapsed. Hare, single back, or empty back formation. He throws it out left to the running back, Bowenon, who actually gets eight yards on the play. Nice pick up there, but it's third down now on the play. Huge down right here. Under four minutes to go and the clock running. Third and two Huskies just inside their own 35. Hare with the snap. Another passing play. This time it's right side wide open as Saffold, and he gets the first down across the 40. Huskies still running the hurry-up offense. Maybe not the best idea, but it's what they're used to. They're back to the line now with under 3.40 to go. Another empty set formation. Hare takes the snap. He's going deep over the middle and nearly intercepted by Jason Beck. That would have been massive. But he gets a hand in there knocks it away. Huskies living dangerously. They're trying to put this game away. Brings up second and 10 now from their own 41. Shotgun formation. Running back to his left, two wide receivers on each side of the field. Hare takes the snap. He's throwing to the right side, hauled in by Saffold. Just shy of the first down marker. It's going to be third and one at the 50. This might be four down territory because the Huskies are being really aggressive right now, trying to end this football game. Third and one, shotgun formation again. Huskies looking to the sideline to get the play in. Hare is going to have it on an option up the middle, and he picks up the first down. Still 3.20 to go. The clock is not ticking very much as the Huskies run their no-huddle offense. They're trying to score. They're not just trying to run out the clock. They're inside the four, near the 50. They're inside the 45 of the Eagles, and now they throw it left, and that one's dropped on the play. I mean, you got to admire the Huskies. They're not looking to just kill clock. They're trying to score points and put it away, but... I mean, there's still 3.13 to go. It's now second and down. Bowenon takes this one. He goes up the middle with a first down, and that one might be the dagger as the clock will now tick under three minutes to go once they set this back up. Fresh set of downs knocking on the 30 of the Eagles are the Huskies. Here takes the snap. He's going to give it to Bowenon, who will be wrapped up just past the line of scrimmage. Again with the hurry up for the Huskies. Second and nine. Another delayed handoff. This time it's going to be a loss of yardage for Bowen on. It was Kyle Rashaw bringing them down. It brings up third and 11 from the 32. Shotgun formation. Running back to his left. Three wide receivers out to the right. One to the left. This could be the game for the Huskies if they convert here on third and 11. Eagles will have a chance to tie it perhaps if they stop it. It'll be interesting to see what the Huskies do. 2.10 to go by the time this one snaps. Ware takes it. He's got time. He throws over the middle to the end zone. Caught. Christian Blake. Touchdown. Huskies. Dagger. Huskies. Brilliant pass by Ware. He knew he was about to get hit. But he just delivered the football beautifully and the Huskies with the touchdown drive may have just put this one away with 208 to go this will be a bitter pill to swallow for the Eagles that fumble at inside the five was the turning point and I mean without it they could be going to tie this game up instead they're just gonna try and get to within a score and hopefully get the ball back on an onside kick it's about all they can hope for here on first down they can fire it out to the right Antoine Porter brings it in for a gain of 12. So no time off the clock now as he gets out of bound. Nice route there. First down for the Eagles. Roback takes the snap. He's going to fire it out quickly to the right side again. This time it's Antoine Porter on a curl and he brings it out of bounds after pick up a 9. Huskies defense obviously comfortable with a little bit of cushion in this situation. Up two scores with under two minutes to go. Second and one for the Eagles. Roback drops back. Roback's going to fire one downfield. Wide open is Sergio Bailey. He brings it in and scores. Touchdown, Eagles. Wait a minute. Maybe we're not done yet. Just when you need a big play, who's there to deliver it? Sergio Bailey gets behind three men on the play. Unbelievable. And Brogan Roback delivers a strike. It looks like zone defense for the Huskies as Sergio Bailey just runs right by the nickel. And then he just keeps going past the corner and the safety. Looks like the safety bit on something. 
And that allows Sergio Bailey to run free. And look at this throw by Brogan Roback. Steps up into the pocket that was collapsing around him. And just hits Sergio Bailey in perfect stride for the touchdown. And the Eagles with exactly what they needed. A quick strike. 75 yards and three plays. Only 19 seconds off the clock. They're back within seven with a minute 49 to go. And now it's in interesting. Do you try for the onside kick? Or do you give your defense one more chance with three timeouts and a minute 49 to get off the field? Looks like the Eagles will line up for the onside kick. Barnes with the kick. And it's hauled in by Kenny Galladay, and he will have it at about the 45-yard line. As you can see, the Eagles actually leading in about most offensive statistics at this point in the game, but trailing by seven. Huskies have the ball at EMU's 45. A first down will end it. EMU's got three timeouts, so they can get the ball back if they get off the field. First down play is an option that just has nowhere to go. Drew Hare tried about four different directions. None of them looked good. He ends up being dropped by Jeremiah Harris for a loss of one. So that brings up second and 11. Eagles used their first timeout with a minute 43 to go. Shotgun formation. Huskies may be throwing to win this thing. Instead, it's a draw up the middle, and Drew Bowenon goes right up the gut. First down, Huskies. Eagles used their second timeout, but that might just do it, folks. Eagles can technically get the ball back if they can stop them from a first down, which they cannot. As Drew Bowenon goes to the right side, picks up the yards again. Huskies with the first down. Huskies with a huge win here at home over the Eastern Michigan Eagles. In a very important game for the Mac West as they are now in first place and control their own destiny in the Mac West division. First down play, they're handing it off to Drew Bowen on for some reason instead of kneeling it. He gets it inside the 15, or inside the 10 rather. So that will do it here at Northern Illinois. The Eagles for the first time this year are defeated. This was the final score of 35 to 28. A hard fought game. You gotta give credit to the Eagles offense. They hung in there, kept fighting back, but this Huskies offense just was too good. And that turning point and the difference in this game has to be that fumble at the NIU five that was returned for a touchdown for the Huskies. Because after that, and before that, this game was back and forth. And you see right here, that touchdown was the difference in this one. Eagles lose. 28 to 35. Keep in mind it was 21 to 7. NIU at the half. Eagles did a good job getting it to within one score twice, but the Huskies just did a good job responding when they needed to. Their final two drives on offense. Not a great game by Brogan Roback, but to be fair, he didn't have a lot of receivers open downfield or a lot of time to throw. He had to run a lot. But he does end up going 14 for 24, 161 yards and two touchdowns. So not terrible but certainly not what you expect out of a quarterback as good as he. But what you can expect out of Shaq Van, he delivered, and then some. He goes 182 yards on the ground off of 20 carries. That's an average of 9.1 per carry. He also had a touchdown. Great game by Shaq Van, unfortunately. It just wasn't enough for the Eagles. Roback picked up 25 yards on nine rushes. Ian Erickson picks up another rushing touchdown on the year. He had eight yards on one carry. Levante Robinson had a yard on that third and one. Sergio Bailey doing what he does all year, making big plays. He led the team in receiving five catches, 94 yards, and a touchdown. Antoine Porter hauled in two for 21. Nigel Kilby, two for 18. Johnny Neapolo, two for seven, and a touchdown. In defense, Ike Calderon leads the way with 10 tackles, including one for a loss. Only two sacks on the day for the defense, one by Derek Williams, one by Jeremiah Harris. No turnovers forced by the Eagles. They committed the one, which has been something that they haven't done this year. No field goals attempted by the Eagles. Four punts by Austin Barnes. Nice average of 52.2. Sergio Bailey had a nice game returning kicks and a nice game returning punts. Drew Hare, you got to give your hats off to him. He's been having an up-and-down season, but he came to play today. 17 for 22, 218 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Great job by him. Great job by Joel Bowenon as well. He picks up 116 yards on only 19 carries. As we look at the team stats, of course, final score in this one, Northern Illinois 35, EMU 28, 19-18 in the first down category in favor of NIU. Total yardage, NIU leads 380 to 377. 
Eastern Michigan leads the day rushing. They had 216 yards and two touchdowns on 35 on 33 rushes. Two NIU's 162 yards, two touchdowns on 34 rushes through the air. NIU 17 for 22, two touchdowns, 218 yards. EMU 14 for 24, two touchdowns, 161 yards. Third down conversions, EMU 6 for 10, Huskies 6 for 9. Red zone, Eagles get in there four times with three touchdowns. The other time was that turnover. Huskies get in there three times for three touchdowns. They do get in there at the end, but obviously kneeled on the ball to end the game. One turnover, something that has been beneficial for the Eagles, has been not turning the ball over and forcing them on defense. They didn't force any today. They turned it over once on that fumble, which was the difference in this one. So actually a really even game. It just was that that fumble recovery. It was a huge swing of momentum, huge swing of points. And the Huskies hang on to win this one 35-28. to As we move ahead on the season, the Eagles now 6-1, and certainly still in good position. Now they're just going to need a little help. I don't think NIU is going to win out, so they should lose in conference again, which means if the Eagles can get back on track, they can find themselves winning the MAC West. In good news, though, Donovan Walker, the great punter of the class that we are going after, has committed to EMU, as well as Matt Bowling, the running back. And we got a couple other guys that are ready to visit us. As we take a quick look at our recruiting, we are now up to nine commits so far. As you see, Matt Bowling, the Juco, out of Warren, Ohio, two-star. And Donovan Walker, two-star punter out of Cutlerville, Michigan, commits to us over four Power 5 teams. So that's a big get there. I mean, it is a punter, but he's a good one. Let me take a quick look at some guys ready to visit. Let's just go ahead and get them in for this coming up week against Toledo. Try and get some separation for these guys. And as you see, four-star running back, Ronnie Brown. We're still in the lead for him. This would be a massive get. He's easily the best player we're going after. And we lead Michigan State, Michigan, Notre Dame, and Wisconsin. So this would be a massive get for us. And we're in good position for a lot of these other guys that we're going after. So we can put together a pretty solid class here for EMU in our first season, which is big because this team that we have right now is pretty damn good. We're going to lose a lot of good players this offseason. So next year and maybe even the year after may actually be a little rough. But if we can start loading up some recruiting classes to soften those blows for the years to come that will be hugely beneficial and this class looks like it could be on the right track to do that as we take a quick peek at the top classes in the nation as we are a little over the halfway point of the season look at us 66th in the nation nothing to write home about but if you're eastern michigan i'd be willing to bet that that's one of the best classes they've ever had if we can finish anywhere near this final position we got eight two stars, one three star, no one stars. We got nine prospects total. Take a quick look at everybody we have on board so far. Let's find another MAC team. See if any MAC teams ahead of us right now at this point of the season in recruiting. Central Michigan is at 50. Ball State is at 44. Western Michigan's at 31. Miami, Ohio is at 21. I guess that's what's ha what happens when you recruit in Ohio. So yeah, right now we are fifth in the MAC in recruiting. Obviously very early. People like Hawaii are, are not actually gonna finish in the top 10. So there's a whole lot to change, but being fifth in the MAC is Something to be proud of, especially when we have a lot of good players leaning towards us here in the recruiting battle. Let's take a quick look at the top 25 after a number of top 10 teams fall. Now Oklahoma stands at number one still. Washington stays at two. Ohio State, Houston, Clemson, Alabama, Stanford, UCLA round out the top eight. And then you got Western Kentucky jumping up to nine. Texas stays at 10. Florida State stays at 11. Baylor jumps up to 12. USC jumps up to 13. Washington State up to 14. North Carolina up to 15. Virginia Tech 16. 
TCU falls two spots after losing to Texas. Miami jumps to 18. Tennessee drops two spots after losing to Bama. Louisville drops from 9 to 20 after losing at Syracuse. Oklahoma State drops 16 to 21 after losing to Iowa State, who enters ranked after that win at 22. Kansas State drops one spot after losing to West Virginia, who enters at 24 somehow, even though they won 30 to 12. Michigan drops 12 to 25 after their loss to the Terps. Pretty sure it said in the update they were number seven or nine. I don't know. Anyway. Let's take a quick look at the MAC West right now. After that loss to Northern Illinois, you see how important it was. They sit at the top of the division at 4-1, and one, as are Western and Central Michigan, who we have yet to play. Then we got us at 3-1. and one. Quick peek at the MAC East shows Ohio at 4-2, and two, being followed by Akron at 3-2 and two, and Buffalo at 2-2. Two and two. So our next opponent is Toledo. We're back home taking on the Rockets. Toledo's favored to win this one. You see they went on the road against Florida and won. Florida doesn't look very good this year, but still. And then they followed it up with a two-possession win on the road against Missouri. Toledo is 2-0 against the SEC this year on the road. Beat up a Mac, uh, FCS team. Lost pretty good to Central Michigan, though, at home. Beat Ball State by a touchdown on the road. Lost to Western Michigan on the road but in overtime. And coming off a win against 0-7 Miami of Ohio with a 20-12 win. So this game could be interesting. Looks like we may actually be pretty evenly matched. We're at home. I like our chances to go 4-1 in the conference. 7-1 overall. It will be a tough game against Toledo. We'll see if we can bounce back against the Rockets after this tough loss to the Huskies. So be sure to subscribe and join us for the next time here on the Eastern Michigan Eagles Dynasty.